Okay, so last week we told you that the two most important things you need to look at are soil pH and then cation exchange capacity. Number three is something called base saturation. And what that is, is we're measuring the ratio of five different nutrients out in the field. Calcium, magnesium, potassium, sodium, and... Hydrogen. Help me out, Darren. Yeah, there you go. You know, <laughs> I, like, I, I always don't start... Don't forget hydrogen, I always, start, I always start through the list and I go, man, I know I'm missing something here. <laughs> so well, well, let's talk about that hydrogen thing real quick. If you have hydrogen out in the field, that tells you only one thing, that your soil pH is too low. And all you have to do is raise your soil pH and your hydrogen level drops. And what we're looking for on the base saturation test is we want to see hydrogen at less than 10%. So if your hydrogen is over 10%, that means that you have a low soil pH. Just lime that field. You'll raise your soil pH to get to a better level. You'll lower the hydrogen level below 10%, and then you're in good shape with that one. In our part of the world, Magnesium is one that we look at as a negative. Really, your crop does need magnesium. In some parts of the country, magnesium levels are low, and this is one where you've got to be adding. So usually with magnesium, we'd like to see that percentage on base saturation somewhere 12 to 25%. Uh, we tend to be towards the higher side just because of the soils we're working with. Uh, but if you're on the lower side, you'd like to see that number up at least up to 12. If you are in an area that's less than 12% magnesium in your base saturation, you probably need to fertilize with magnesium. Now, sodium is one on the soil test that we really don't like to see much of at all. We want to see that number below 1% for sodium. If you have higher levels of sodium, that usually tells me one of a couple of things. Number one, you either have poor drainage, or number two, you put way too much manure out there. So here again, relatively simple, kind of like the hydrogen one, here's how you fix it. You improve your drainage, and you quit throwing so much manure out there. So we like manure, manure don't get me wrong, manure is great but there is a limit to it because of the amount of salt that's typically in manure. Well, with calcium, we would like to see that number roughly in the 65 to 80% range on base saturation. If your number is too low, a lot of times you can go out there with some lime or some gypsum, something like that, and get some more calcium out there. And sometimes your number is low because some of the other numbers are too high. So for example, if you had a really low soil pH, that would mean you would have a really high hydrogen percentage. If you raise your soil pH, your hydrogen percentage goes down, and because this base saturation thing is just a ratio of one, one to the other, your calcium number will probably go up. So they all kind of tie together, and it doesn't just happen overnight, some of these changes. It may take you a period of years, but the better you can get all this base saturation thing in order, the better off you're going to be in terms of yield in most cases. And this is all shown as a percentage. So between these five nutrients, the percentages are gonna add up to 100. So as, as you mentioned, if you lower one, by default, you're gonna be raising another one. Now, one of the nutrients that we've been working on raising on our farm, and I know talking to a lot of farmers across the upper Midwest, this is a concern, is potassium. Your parts per million may say two or 300 parts per million. You say, wow, this is great. I've got lots of it out there, but, but in this ratio, it's really not that high. Right, so what we're getting at is if you have really high calcium and magnesium levels in the soil, just because you have two or 300 parts per million of potassium, that may or may not be enough. What we care about is the ratio in base saturation. We wanna see that number four to 8%. Okay, so maybe you're listening to us this whole show and you're saying, wait a minute now, you keep talking about this base saturation, I don't see that on my soil test, and you may not you need to specifically ask for base saturation tests on your soil test. It really doesn't cost that much more money. You know, to run a complete soil test, you're probably talking about somewhere in the neighborhood of $30. It's really not a big deal. You get the basic test for about 20 bucks. So for $10 more, you get a whole bunch more useful information like base saturation that can help you make money on your farm. Well, another key to making money in the farm is weed control, especially if you have our Weed of the Week. It's coming up next.